Hey guys, so yesterday I jumped into a plus 30. Yes, a plus 30 key on my Feral Druid, which was um, pretty wild. It, it's kind of weird getting declined from plus 25 keys, and yet at the same time, I managed to jump into a plus 30 key. Uh, so we did a 27 Junkyard, we 3 chested it. The Junkyard, I didn't play super, super hot. I died a couple times, and I was like really annoyed with it. So I focused up a little bit on stream, jumped into this plus 30, and tried to just like really focus. Didn't really interact with chat a whole lot, and tried to just make sure that I played uh, as best I possibly could. So I want to talk you guys through this key, and uh, yeah, just talk to you about how it went, and yeah, it's fun to see a Feral. I mean, this is the highest key in the world for a Feral Druid right now, um, and yeah, it was a pretty fun one. It was pretty fun to do. It was stressful, but I think Streets is quite a nice key to do right now uh, when you consider some of the other dungeons in the pool and how punishing they can be. So my build for this dungeon, I'm taking the haste buff from Shrouded. I'm running... Okay, I'm attempting to run Circle in this dungeon based on how I know... Um, or like based on knowing this tank and how they like to pull. They like to pull big. They like to chain. So I was like, right, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go Circle for this because I think Circle should be good. And so that's what I did. So with that, I'm running Predator, I'm running Savage Raw, I'm running MOC, uh, and then Primal Wrath, which are all the classics, right? Um, and it worked reasonably well. I think, I think it actually worked reasonably well as a legendary choice and like as a build option. Uh, of course, I'm Night Fae as well, right? It's, it worked reasonably well, but I think that there were things that I could have done in the key that would have improved how how i performed with this build and there's a little change that i make later on and you'll see in the dungeon there's a there's a shift that i make so make sure you keep watching the video to see when that comes in but like for example right here right if i'd saved my tiger fury like i could have used berserk here i could have gotten an, a second berserk in on this pull and there are a few occasions in this dungeon where i'm just like holding my cooldowns ultimately resulting in me just not doing as much damage as i should be doing because I easily could have used a second Berserk on that pull. And then I would have gotten another Berserk halfway through the next pull, right? A couple of things to note as well with this group composition. This group composition is kind of terrible because nobody is actually helping anybody. We have two Lusts in the group, so either the Hunter or the Shaman could go. If, if we want to play around the Warlock, then we'd bring in a Priest. A Priest could also then give me Fey Guardian, so we could give... PI going to the Warlock, Fey Guardians coming to me, and then we could have gotten like um, a monk in, in or, or, or sorry, we could have kept the group that we have and gotten a monk instead of uh, the Warlock. Like we could have made changes to our composition that ultimately would have been better. This really isn't the best comp. Like if we had a Vengeance Demon Hunter, this would be a good comp, or uh, or it'd be better, right? Or a Priest, we could bring in a monk, we could bring in. You could bring things in that would actually complement people in this group. So we didn't have any of that. So I think from the offset, we were probably going to struggle to time this key. Uh, which is, you know, okay. But we we give it a shot. We do our best. We'll see how it goes. And in this first section of dungeon, this is where I think Circle is going to do quite well. Also, we're going to end up pulling the right-hand side of the dungeon after we kill first boss. You know, you can go kind of left with the single target mobs or right um, with the AoE mobs. We go right-hand side. So I'm thinking, okay, this will be a better better build for it. But so far, so good. I'm trying to keep my scar stacks up. I think I committed my scars as well uh, on this big pull. I also had my cooldowns up for this pull, which was good. But I could have gotten... I mean, look, this pull is still going. And 30 seconds is left on uh, before my Berserk is up. Which means I, I missed a whole Berserk. So far in this dungeon, we're at 4 minutes and I've missed a whole Berserk. So, it's better, like, it's better with your cooldown usage. And this is something I talk to you guys about a lot on stream. It's better to use a dog shit Berserk and a dog shit Convoke. Okay, I'm not going to use the terms dog shit. But it's better to use, like, a bad Berserk or a, an, an unoptimized Berserk and an unoptimized Convoke than to miss one out completely, right? A lot of people go, oh, do you save Berserk? Do you save Convoke for each other? And it's like, no, if they line up, great. But the way I think of it in Mythic Plus, Convoke is single target, Berserk is AoE. If they line up perfectly, amazing, because now I get Nia with my Berserk. That's fantastic. 
but I'm not going to sit there and rely on it and, and, and you know, like, line it out perfectly. Because dungeons, they're not sims. They are... They are they are live, right? They 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 are live, and things happen, and things change, and maybe you wipe here, maybe there's a problem, maybe a pull gets extended, maybe you accidentally change something, right? Like things happen in keys that can shift your like kind of expectations, and you need to be able to adapt to that, and you need to think ahead, you need to think ahead and plan ahead and think right, where am I right now, and what is upcoming? Are we on a single target mob right now? But after the single target mob. We're going to go and pull eight mobs. Okay, well then I want to make sure I have Berserk for that. I don't want to use Berserk on this one mob. Unless I'm pulling something like Zolgamux or something, right? And it's going to be a four minute... <laughs> it's going to be a four minute battle. In which case, I can get a whole Berserk off. And it will be finished and up available before Zolgamux dies. In a higher level key, right? So, um, these things kind of keep in mind. But, uh, it's very focused by this point in the key. Very much just trying to like you know, maintain my savage draw, maintain my scar stacks, try to make sure I'm using my cooldowns, not letting anything really, like, sit there. Um, and, like, I've got Berserk right now, right? Berserk's coming up. It's like, do I commit this Berserk or not? In my head, no. I, I actually probably wouldn't commit this one right now. Because this mob's at 40%. I don't have a Tiger Fury with it. And then, this boss. This boss, you're kind of on a... Uh, in a way, you're kind of on a time limit to kill it. So we're going to be using a potion. You can see at my equal side next to my hellstone that I have a potion there. That is uh, a potion of unhindered something. Unhindered something. But if you go and type in unhindered on the auction house, you can get it. It's basically a freedom of action potion. It prevents you from getting like stunned or anything like that and CC'd for a short time. So you can use it on this boss and it'll prevent you from getting... Uh, if you get focused, it'll prevent you from actually being... Um, trapped so everyone can use those but then after that once everyone's used those and the hunters turtled and whatever then like then we're in inefficiencies because then we have to try and kill this mob like you know we have to try and kill these gates by the way i could have used another berserk on this guy the time it took like th this is the thing right i could have used another berserk there and berserk would come up on this guy in i don't know in about a minute well less than a minute now, from now like 30 seconds from now um but yeah so i have everything here for this boss just gonna send everything now this is where like playing this circle build playing it in a higher level key right this is my first level 30 key i've not had any pra I've, I've not done this key at the 26 and then the 27 and the 28 and 29 and slowly ramped up and got to feel because i'm very much like i feel things out i'm not a theory crafter i'm what people call a feely crafter i like to feel how things are and how they shift and change right so and I think a lot of people, like, I'm not unique. I'm not, like, I'm not, like, I don't know, uh, I don't know, like, Rain Man or something, okay? But I, I'm sure a lot of people do this. But this, this is mainly how I receive my information and how I learn. So, this is where I've kind of taken a gamble with Circle. I don't have Sabertooth right now. This is a pure single target boss. I do not have Sabertooth. So, this is where the limitations of the build are going to be visible. Also, as I told you, I missed a whole Berserk in this dungeon. So my 22k overall right now could probably be a lot closer to 25, 26k. Probably a lot closer. Um, so I'm kind of trying to keep level here on this boss. And it just takes a long time. Like these bosses on a plus 30 fortified, just take a long time. But we, you know, we're doing our best. We don't have Bloodlust for it. That's probably a big, big aspect of it is not having Bloodlust. But we've been in combat for a minute 30, and it's at like 50%, so people should have cooldowns coming back up. Here's my Berserk coming, ramping, ready to rock. Really wish I'd had a Priest in this dungeon. Fey Guardians would have been so nice. So this is where things actually started going wrong for us a little bit in the run. We start racking up a couple deaths here, so watch the Shaman in a second. Does end up dying, because they're not fully, fully topped when the um, when that like kind of ability comes through, the Contraband comes through. So the Shaman dies there. And then not too long afterwards, the hunter actually dies. So I think an interrogation comes through now. There's a contraband, everyone's alive. I think an interrogation comes through. And I think the hunter goes to burst it. So I move out a little bit. And move around and the hunter just gets kind of glacked there so we we rack up a couple deaths to begin with oh and then the and then the healer dies right at the end so we have like three deaths now by this point so 
this is all like adding to reduction in time, right? We don't have like right now it's three of us in this fight right here. Like, so things like this have slowed us down a little bit, um, and have probably contributed to the result of the end of this key. <laughs> so we're working our way through. We're at like roughly fifty percent trash now. We've got one boss down. The timer is probably looking okay, but really not great. And we gotta get a little bit of a hustle and a bustle on. I like to use this inky black potion when I'm in this dungeon for this specific section right here. It makes these mechanics so much easier to see. So I like to I like to make sure that I'm using this. And so far, like my overall DPS, I'm a little bit worried of. I'm a little bit like, oh man, I'm I'm kind of behind. But in the grand grand scheme. I'm doing like 20k overall compared to the two best specs in the game right now. So really, I, I think this is okay. But at the same time, imagine if this group had a rogue, they'd probably be feeling a lot more confident in their performance and like just the dungeon as a whole, right? The rogue would probably be do doing closer to what uh, the other guys in the group are doing. But th this was a really fun like experiment. It was really nice jumping into this key and the result of it actually puts me up at rank one feral. So when, when we complete this key, I'm actually end up being rank one feral. I'm 2,800 now officially. So 2.8K has been achieved and we have another good push week. So I'm going to aim for 2.9K and see what I can do. You know, we'll see if I, if I can hit 3K this season, that'd be really cool. I'd like to kind of go far with feral this season because it's actually good. I know it's season four and nobody cares, but like it's awkward because it's season four. So nobody cares about anything. But at the same time, it's like the best season that Feral's had in since I started playing it. Um, it just actually feels like it can do something right now. At the same time, it's I could still see it getting a little bit of a buff. Go for it, Blizzard. Now, trying to make sure in these packs, right? Getting back into these keys a little bit. Or into this key. With these packs, this tank is going to get absolutely throttled here if we're not interrupting these casts. So I'm trying to actually make sure that I'm maiming, I'm, you know, shadow meld raking, I'm interrupting, trying to make sure that I'm helping prevent the tank from dying here. You can see Typhoon's on cooldown as well. So I'm trying to do some stuff here just to, like, th this is a key where, you know, when I'm in like a 24, 25, sometimes I'm like, ah, like, you know, I don't need to maim this mob. I don't need the Typhoon right now. It's a blood DK. They'll just live, right? Like, I've had blood DKs in the past be like, yo, don't Typhoon. It's 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 making me die. Because they, they need to keep hitting things. And if you Typhoon things away from them, they can't hit them. So they die. Uh, so I've had DK say that to me before. But, like, you know, I'm trying to make sure of that kind of stuff. Because, look, right now, tank goes down. So these, these this dungeon is kind of rough. And then I have to do some shenanigans. So this is where Infected Wounds really comes into play. <laughs> No, but I have to do some shenanigans. I'm trying to continue an AoE rotation. Uh, I'm trying to get, like, Primal Wrath up on it rather than ripping. Trying to use, like, Swipe and Thrash. So it's, like, not a great single target rotation, but it's something. And we end up finishing this mob up, and, and it's okay. But, like, think of all this time loss, right? Like, the Hunter died as well because the tank dies, so the Hunter dies because the Hunter had aggro. So this is where we start losing more and more and more time. Um, with the with the with the key, but I think I played that out well, and I think I prevented us from wiping further by doing that, which was pretty good. And then we get into kind of like this mailroom section. I kind of just move things along a little bit. Right, cool. So we pull in a peacekeeper, chain this into the mailroom, start blasting. Get everything grouped up nicely. Really nice to have a blood DK for that reason. Now, Berserk is off cooldown, and this is something I do a lot. Berserk is off cooldown, but I have Convoke available. So what I will do, once people go, oh, do you Berserk and then Convoke or Convoke and then Berserk? If my Berserk is close to being off cooldown, and we're current, like, we are here now in this big AoE, that, that Convoke is getting sent. Chances are I'm going to get one or two bites. That will reduce my Berserk by a further few seconds, well, six seconds, right? And it just helps get that Berserk up quicker. And look, now I get my full length of Berserk on as many mobs as I can, whilst everything's like looking healthy, and the Berserk gets the value. So that's something that I'll do, something that I would recommend doing, um, because you still get the Neo Mastery for Berserk anyway. You lose a little bit of damage in theory, but you gain damage because you actually got a more optimized Berserk. So, you know. Right, so I st stun this bad boy, pull everything in nicely, get some kicks. Again, this build is really easy and, like, this is a really nice, easy build. Because all I need to micromanage is Savage Raw. 
And then that's it. And then I can... And Scars, I guess, as well. But that's not really, like, a build thing. Um, but... Those are the only two things in my mind that I'm trying to get in this key. And then... It's just interrupting, stunning, typhooning. Whew. All of those things that I need to do in order to, like, help help the tank out. Um, and that's, like, the, my main focus there. Now, we have Bloodlust up in six minutes. And we want Bloodlust for this boss. So we're actually going to switch up our route. And we're going to go out of here. We got one pack of mobs still left. We're going to go out of here. And I am going to go on a secret mission. So I've activated that portal there already. Well, like, you know, our team has. I slide through here nice and clean. You've probably seen this if you watch, like, TGP. If you watch stuff like that, you probably see, like, people do this. If you watch higher level keys, you probably see people do this. And I activate the portal. And then I can go through it myself. And then I can just rejoin the rest of the group. And then we're, uh, we're good to go. So nice little maneuver. And at this point in the dungeon, this is where I'm starting to regret, like, running circle. And this is where I'm like, oh, man, did I make a really, really bad decision? So I end up on the fly having a thought to myself. And I go, you know what? After this boss, after this boss that we do now, I'm going to Dream Grove. I'm going to teleport out. I'm going to switch into Sabretooth, Soul of the Forest, Frenzy Band. And I'm going to Dream Grove back. And then I'm going to walk through the dungeon portal and I'm going to get summoned. And that's what I end up doing after this. So that I can have more single target prior focus for the last two bosses. Well, last three bosses that are all very single target heavy. But at this point in the key, I'm looking at the timer. I think if we had one more boss dead. I, I, think, if we, I think if we had one more boss dead by this point, I would be confident that we were going to time this key. Like if, if we had two bosses dead on this timer with 18 minutes left and 80% trash, I'd be like, yeah, this is, this is timed. And we didn't really have any major issues all throughout this dungeon, but we just had, we just racked up deaths. We just racked up deaths, it slowed us down. Me being a federal druid, probably not Biss, but so like maybe 30 keys, maybe a little bit too high for feral. Um, or maybe I just chose the wrong build. The thing is, I can't really like, I, th I think maybe this would have, I, I liked that I was playing circle up to this point because as well on this boss that we do, we get massive haste increase, which is going to be pretty good with circle anyway. And it's not really a single target boss. So it's like a four target cleave for two waves and then a single target boss that dies quite quickly. Like, okay, that's that's okay. You get big haste, it works with circle. So I actually don't mind this boss with a circle build. It does okay. And so there was only one boss that was actually inefficient. We got 80% of our trash with this build. So like... It's decent. Would I have done, have done more than 22k with Frenzy Band? Maybe. It, it's For me right now, I'm still trying to figure out if I could have done better with this build if I just used my offensive cooldowns more. Which, I mean, is an obvious thing that I should be doing anyway. Or if I sh was playing the wrong build. And because I would, never rec I would never naturally recommend Circle in this dungeon. I would always say, like, go Frenzy Band or go Apex or something, right? Frenzy Band, generally speaking, because there's not really, like cleave as much like there's no there's not really many prior targets uh that we care as much about but um i'm i'm way more focused on uh on frenzy band in this dungeon but i'm like you know what i'm gonna try circle it's a high level key mobs are gonna be living for a while like i'll get good bleed efficiency here i'll get good cooldown usage I was, yeah okay we'll try this so now we're like like now we're five minutes down remember i checked in at the 18 minute mark we're like five minutes down from that Imagine if this boss had already been dead. We would have been absolutely chilling. Now, this boss is kind of scary when it's storming. And we pull in an infiltrator. And there's a sleep cloud in melee. And we're all trying to continue to resume our buffs. Like, we're trying to resume our buffs. There's a sleep cloud in melee. There's these poison bombs that explode. The infiltrate is doing its carrying swarm. This is actually, for the fact that it's only two mobs, there's no interrupts or anything required. For the fact that it's only two mobs, this is actually a very, very scary situation. So I'm, you can, well, you can't see my face, but I am very much focused on this. Look, look, we all get pulled in. Now there's two sleep clouds. And I'm trying to get my buff. I run around the side. Boom. I managed to hit it. Do a little bit of cleave. We do a little bit of cleaving. A little we do a little bit of trolling. And I use my stacks of scars as well. So a lot of people keep asking me, like, when am I using scars? I keep my scars stacked at four, 4. And then whenever we go massive AoE. 
Or if I have cooldowns and it's like the last 30 seconds of a boss, I will send the fifth stack. That's what you need to know. So boom, I dreamwalk. I tell my group they're going to need to summon me to mailroom. Because by the time they get to mailroom, should roughly work out where like I'm ready to go. So I switch my stuff around. Did I even take Blood Talons? Yeah, I take Blood Talons because I'm like, right. I want to be a single talk. I'm still not going to take Brutal Slash, okay? Because we do still have trash left in the dungeon. And I'm not. I'm still not going to take Brutal Slash in Mythic Plus. But I go as pure single target throughput as I possibly can. And this is why I kind of like playing this build compared to playing like Necro Feral. It's so much more adaptable because I can literally just teleport out the dungeon with Dream Grove. And then Dream Grove back in, right? If you recast it, it sends you back to the dungeon entrance. But I do that, and then it's like, uh, I, I'm still Night Fae, and I'm still Nia. So I don't need to change any conduits. I don't need to change any soulbinds. It's like really quick and efficient, and I can just move things around nice, easy peasy, and, and I'm good to go. So I really like it. So I send cooldowns here. We do have the boss, so we're going to pull up to this. But like at this point in the key, I'm like, yeah, okay, I need to just be sending these cooldowns. I need to just be using these things. And this is where it would probably be nice to speak to somebody who does plus 30 keys more often. But I think my highest streets before this was a plus 25. So going from a plus 25 streets to a plus 30 is like... Mm, I mean, I play, mechanically, I played fine. Like, mechanically, like, look, we have seven deaths on the board. I haven't died once. I haven't even been in danger of dying, okay? I've been aware of, like, the, the struggle points. So the first boss, when the contraband comes through, you need to make sure you're, like, topped up on health. I've been helping with the portal thing. I could even solo, like, the market event really well. Like, I can do all that stuff. All the trash that's coming through. Like, I didn't die on any of the kind of scary moment you know when you go right after the first boss as well like didn't die on any of these pivotal kind of moments in the key where you can die quite easily for a plus 30 so i feel like i played the key well um but i uh like mechanically but it was just the experience of knowing like cooldown stuff that i would like to build up so we're going to postmaster big loss we get the hay shield Trying to stay in it as much as I possibly can. Now, I didn't have Berserk on pull, but that's okay, because I'm definitely going to get at least one Berserk here. It says we're in combat for a minute 30, but obviously that's because of the previous trash as well. These bosses are dying okay. I would not want to do this boss on the plus 30 Tyrannical. No, I don't have enough avoidance yet, but like that, that shit would seem scary. But on this level... On Fortified, I don't mind it. So I start slamming, I start clapping these little little bomby boys. The last one's maybe a little bit, uh, this is maybe a little bit sus. Oh, I literally run to it because I'm like, nah, that's gonna explode, dude. Managed to get lucky there. Now I Berserk um, without my Convoke. The mindset there is that I can get a, another Berserk probably in this dungeon and if I have to hold Berserk for longer then I might not be able to do that so that's the thought process in this because it's taken we've done a, an additional 30% boss health roughly no we've done another 25% boss health in one minute so the way I'm thinking is I should get Berserk back before this boss is at 20% health so see how like getting like a bad Berserk is like better than getting Getting two bad Berserks is better than getting one perfect Berserk. Is what I would say. Now we kind of just play through this clean. Now the healer has this bomb and I try and move over. I can see that they're trying to figure out where to go for it, right? Okay, hold on. I'm going to show you this. So the healer picks up a bomb. And they're trying to figure out where to go with it, okay? So you can see them now. They're trying to figure out where to go. I, I see it over there. So I go, right. Look, he's like running back and forth. I'm like, yo, throw it to me. Throw it to me. We're not on Discord, by the way, for this. This is a plus 30 key with no comms. So because the healer is doing that, I end up dying. I have health stone available. And I think I would have lived if I used health stone there. So actually, actually, when I did this key live, I was like blaming the healer in the sense that it was like a discussion of ah well because the healer did that because i was away from the boss i wasn't getting predatory swiftness regrowths so my health pool was low because i was trying to like help out the healer 
and then the healer didn't throw to me, so then the healer had to hard manually run there, and then run back, and then the fan mail came through. So it was like, for me, I was like, ah, oh, if, if, if any one of those things had just been squeezed and been more convenient, then I wouldn't have died there. At the same time, I had Hellstone available. I should have used that. I should have sent that. So that's, my death there was my fault. Don't care what the healer was doing, that was my fault. But we play through the rest of the fight, and then it's just like, okay, cool. We got seven minutes left on the dungeon. We have 11% trash that we still need, and we have two more bosses. So this key is not going to be timed. This is just not a timed key. But um, it still looks like... I want to say it's been fairly clean. We've had nine deaths. But for me, this is a clean key because I'm used to 20 deaths in a dungeon when I pug it, okay? And there's like a pure pug, no discord... So plus 30, I was actually quite impressed that we were able to kind of get through all of this. But just for like group purposes, I'll kind of skip through and show you guys a little bit. We grabbed like four infiltrators here. This is insane. We grabbed like three infiltrators. There's sleep pools everywhere. But we drag through and we get onto this boss. Um, nothing really kind of crazy happens on this boss. I'm just trying to, again, maintain scar stacks, make sure I've got my cooldowns which I, i've got all my cooldowns coming up and i'm gonna get ready to send it here now if i use my cooldowns on this guy i'm gonna get my cooldowns back again for the goblin so i'm gonna make sure that i use them now you know just after this right and then we're good to go there it is fully sends it manually clicking my agility potion good and boom, I went from like 13k DPS to 22k DPS. Nice. Thing is, I pushed the boss so quickly. Okay, no, that was actually okay. That was actually okay on timing. So we play through this guy. I'm just doing my single target rotation. Now I have Blood Talons now, so this is where I need to make sure that I'm like Rake Shred Swiping or Thrash Shred swiping, depending on if Rake or Thrash are, are, are already on the target or not. And then just going through my sh uh, Shred rotation and Ferocious Biting. And because I have Sabertooth, I'm going to be extending my rips, so it's like, we're chilling. The rotation now is like super simple, super easy. And we're holding a lot better numbers now on single target. At this level of key, it's a kind of thing where like, like, on lower level keys, like 25s, 26s, you can play the normal build that I play with Circle. And you can still finish on, like, a good, like, 19, like, 18k DPS, I'd say, on certain bosses. You can still finish at that point, even though you're running, like, Circle and you're running, like, Predator and stuff. Because the bosses die so quickly that they're kind of dying in your cooldown windows. Like, it's quite nice where you're getting, like, you're getting, like, maybe, I think, two cooldown uses... And then, like, you're good. Whereas on these bosses... Like, look, I got Berserk up again. I, I probably could have sent another Berserk here. Before waiting for this lady. In fact... Okay. It, nah, it only, it only just came... It uh, came up when the boss was at, like, 20%. So I maybe could have sent another one. But, like... I think this is fine that I held. I think it's okay. Now, this Scar's Trinket is kind of bait. Because this Scar's Trinket is slowing me. I can shift out of form. But that Scar's Trinket that's slowing me uh, makes it very, very scary. And then I end up clipping a little orb there. Because the orb to me in the corner of my eye looks like a... Uh... Oh, I clip a second one. That's actually really, really newbie. But I clipped one because of the... St I think the storming made it like in the corner of my eye. I was like, oh, there's a storming there. But no, there was an orb as well. We played three and we're chilling. No kind of issues now. This, like, last segment of the dungeon, we end up playing, like, quite clean. Don't really have any deaths. Don't really have any problems. The last boss, though, is hilarious. You gotta watch this. So I'll skip through. We end up killing a little bit of trash here. I send some cooldowns. That's fine. Now, this is a cool skip. So I'll show you guys how we skip this mob here. So you can jump up on the side of this. And then... Whoop, 
this is my first time doing it, so I'm a little bit newbie with it. And then BAM! Ascend up. No, this boss is funny. So we go through, we're only a minute depleted, right? Imagine, okay, uh, we skipped, like, we missed one mob off somewhere, they said. So imagine we were at 100% trash right now, and we're pulling this last boss. The key has only been depleted for one minute by the time we're pulling the last boss. So we're maybe, like, three minutes off, like, a pure, like, if we'd, if we'd actually had the perfect percent and everything, like, maybe, like, three minutes off this key being, um, timed. Which is really, really, really not bad. And I think I could have pulled more damage here. That was close. This is even more close. Oh, okay. Okay, this is fine. I'm having a good time on this boss. But at this point, like, the key's depleted, right? So at this point in the key, um... Actually, where did I... Did I die somewhere? I'm not sure if I died somewhere. I must have died somewhere. Because my food buff is gone. But I can't remember where. I think my only deaths were, like, after the key was already depleted. Oh, God. So I didn't have any deaths that, like, actually impacted the timer of the key. So that was good. So I got to go through this now, right? Okay, no, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, this is fine. This is fine. Still playing through this boss. We're chilling. Again, this inky black potion makes this boss really nice because you can really clearly see the contrast between the light and the dark. This makes it so nice and easy. Okay, teleports. All right, let's go. I blink. Big. So I use my soul shape here. Maybe not the smartest move. Because I might end up needing it soon. I'm alluding to something. It's kind of hilarious. So yeah, we're at three minutes depleted by this stage. Yeah, this was like a four minute deplete. Right, so I go through now. What? Oh, okay. Cool. And then I'm like, okay, maybe Gateway will save me? No. And then another one spawns here, and I'm like, right, okay, I'm fucked. So I just die. But like, how... How dumb is that? <laughs> I go to get through this guy, and then as I get... Like, I'm on top of it, and then it teleports away. And I'm like, dude, I'm already on you. You can't teleport away, I'm on you. Um, so that is what it is. I end up getting res, which is nice. Hunter dies then from a similar issue. So I'm waiting, I'm like, can I accept yet? I didn't see where it was, so I'm like, right, I can accept. Oh wait, no, I cannot accept. So I end up, I'm, I'm pissed off, right? I'm pissed off at this point. I'm annoyed. So I'm like, all right, fuck this. I'm going for it. Boss is there, 6%. I'm like, alright, fuck this. I'm just gonna go convoke it. I don't know what I was thinking with the jump. I was like, maybe I can, like... You know, while it's buggy sometimes, maybe sometimes you can get a little bit lucky with bugs and stuff. I was like, oh, I'll jump over it and see. But if we... Spirit Link, I end up living. So I'm chilling. Things show up. Yeah, there we go. Plus 30. 2806. Got 25 IO from that, which is actually insane. But this was really fun. It really hasn't spurred me on to want to do more keys like this. I really enjoyed this key. I would love to do more high-level keys like this. This was really fun. I think genu genuinely, Feral could actually be okay here. Like, I did 21k DPS in this key. I was only 3 or 4k DPS behind, like, these meta specs. So I was like, what? Well, it's like 20% behind, right? Roughly. Just under. But... I think if we changed our group composition and like imagine if I had monk and warrior buff plus like banner plus maybe fag on it like if I had any of these things my damage would have really been a lot different so I liked I like this run and I think it was actually okay in the grand scheme but yeah thank you very much for watching if you want to see me do more of this stuff live come watch me on twitch.tv slash cyber underscore tv link in the description thanks for watching